good Monday morning to you. I hope that uh, you've had a great weekend and are ready for a little bit more Matthew Bible study. Uh, believe it or not, we are up to Matthew Bible study number 48, and we're going to wrap up our section today that we have been looking at over the course of this last week. But I don't want to presume anything. We uh, get new uh, viewers all the time, and so if you're here for the first time, that's okay. Uh, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to be reading from verse 12 through verse 17. Now, when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. And from that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now we've looked at the fact that uh, this was really the right uh, time and that timing was so important to Jesus and was so important to God. Over and over again, Jesus would say, my time has not yet come. And then at the end would say, well, my time has now come. Timing was important. And his timing wasn't quite right to go into Jerusalem at the beginning of his ministry. And he withdrew into the area of Galilee. The place was right. We spent most of last week talking about what a fantastic, phenomenal, surprising place Galilee is. Again, maybe you knew all that, I didn't, and it will forever change my mind in terms of how I see Jesus ministering in those early years of his gospel ministry in Galilee. We learned about his hometown of Capernaum, and we read from verse 17 that from that time, and you can also get the idea from that place, Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, this idea of um, preach might be something that is um, lost on some of us as we stop and think about it because, well, let's face it, sometimes preachers can just be boring. <laughs> I try hard not to be boring when I preach, but you know, sometimes it just isn't, uh, doesn't seem as good as others. Uh, but what do you think of when you think of someone preaching? Is it someone that's standing behind a pulpit? somebody that's all dressed up in a suit, uh, someone that, uh, you know, is bringing you their opinion of what's going on. Well, you know, this, this word of uh, preach is actually, uh, the Greek word is kerousein, uh, which really means the herald's proclamation. That's right. Now, you know what the herald is. I mean, you've seen enough uh, stories, right? The, the herald would be someone who would come into a town and would give a message from the king. Now, there's some interesting aspects to this if you stop and think about preaching being the message of the herald. First of all, when the herald gives his message, or it should be for us as well, the preacher gives his message, there should be this voice and this note of certainty. After all, the herald knows exactly what it is that he wants to say and exactly what the message is. And as we follow Jesus' ministry here over the coming uh, weeks and months of studying Matthew, we're going to see a great deal of certainty. Jesus knew exactly what he wanted to say and how he wanted to say it. Not only does a herald have a voice and a message of certainty, but he also has a voice of authority. After all, the herald is giving a message from the king, and the king has the authority, not the herald himself. So Jesus here is giving a message from God the Father. And we read in many places that people were astounded at his teaching because he did not teach like uh, other teachers and like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other religious leaders of the day. No, Jesus taught as one with authority. So a herald, a preacher, should preach with a message of certainty and a message of authority 
And then finally, and perhaps most importantly, and why there would be such a message of certainty and a message of authority, is that the herald brings a message from a source beyond himself. Again, the herald would come into a city or a town and he would give the message of the king. Jesus often said, that what I tell you, I give you from God the Father. And if you have seen me, you've seen the Father, and I and the Father are one. But he always said that he didn't do anything in his own authority. It was always in the timing and the authority of his heavenly Father. You know, we as preachers today should be doing the same thing, right? I mean, we should have this message of, a, of certainty, we should have this message of authority, and we should certainly understand that this is not our message, but this comes from a source that is far beyond us. Now, this is exciting because here was the message. This was the message that was certain, that was authoritative, and that was beyond Jesus himself. And what was that message? It was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This word repent literally means to change direction, to change mindset, to say, you know, things are different today than what they were before because something new has arrived on the scene. And you know what that something new was in Jesus' day? <laughs> You're right. It was Jesus. It was the Son of God. He represented the kingdom of heaven. It wasn't just a place. It was a timing God had invaded time and space with his own son and gave us the great message. And as a result of that message, as a result of the Son of God coming into our space and our time and in our lives, we repent. We change. It's not a matter that we turn around in our own on our own efforts, deciding, well, we don't like the way we were living before. That's not good enough. I can do better. No, it's that, oh, the light has arrived. I now see more clearly than I ever did before. It's not about me. It's about God. It's not about what I can see going around me. It's about the long-term game plan of God. And you know what's cool? <laughs> he lets you and me in on it. That's right. We get to participate in this message. You get to be part of the message, and I get to be part of the message. Your very life, my very life, can be this Caruso that we're talking about here. This, this preaching with certainty, with authority, and a message that goes beyond ourselves as a source. I hope that you have enjoyed this study, and I'm really looking forward to getting into the study tomorrow as we see Jesus beginning to call his first disciples. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you again on Tuesday.